Welcome to Crosswinds. We're thankful that you're here. And those of you that are looking at the broadcast, we thank God that you are looking at these broadcasts around the world. And we thank you for that. Praise God for, uh, for opening those channels for you to view. Today we're going to be talking to you about it's not fair. You'd say, yes, you did that last week. Uh-huh, this is part two. <laughs> okay. we did. There was so much more that I wanted to say uh, that gives you power and empowers you over this wrong way of thinking. How many of you have ever said it's not fair? Well, where did you get the idea that living was fair? There's nothing fair about life. It's, uh, it's the faith that we have that we have to have that generated by the Holy Spirit so that we can, uh, we can face any problem that comes up. But the Holy Spirit is the strength when something is going on. I promise you that He's the only strength you have. And the addendum to that is you can't do anything without Him. Amen. Not a thing. And there's one more scripture. And without His Spirit, you're none of His. So those of you that don't have the Spirit of God, this is very easy. Jesus, I believe in you. Save me by your Spirit. And give me those things that I need. Strength, wisdom, authority over the adversary. Because I'm going to need all of those things. Now you might not know that you're going to need those things. Some of you at various levels of your experience with God. But you know, I want to tell you, no matter where you are, are you going to need Him? Amen. It says in the Scripture, In Him I live, in Him I move, and in Him I have my being. What does that mean? That we are the breath of God? He, he breathed on us, and we've become a living soul. That means the moment that you first cried and the doctor spanked you on your hiney, and you hadn't even done anything wrong yet. He was just getting you ready. <laughs> so our God is like that too. The moment you were born, He was, he was there, the spark, the energema that went on in the womb, that was God. And He gave life to you. So in Him you live and move and have your being. Amen? Amen. So how much can you do without Him? Nothing. So how do you get Him? See, so you ask for it. The Bible tells us that if we would ask in faith, He would give us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not a dog and pony show, even though it appeared a while ago that it was a dog and pony show. <laughs> yeah, it was not only a joyful noise <laughs> moving when you, you hurt, you know, and that kind of thing. Well, anyway, I wish you could have seen it, those of you by camera <laughs> watching. So... Anyway, I wanted to go back and pick up on some of the things, but one of the things is God does not change. From generation to generation, He is the same. What He did for those generations, He will do for us. And we have to have the right thoughts about that. The only thing that comes between you and God is that blasted gray matter in your head. And all the things that you have loaded in your head from childhood to this date. And many of those things come in the way, get in the way of God. You know, if you have the wrong thoughts, you're not going to get what He wants you to have. Amen? So, let me go on because, you know, 
times clicking. Our concept of God shapes how we view our, ourselves, our life, and those around us. If those around us hurt us, how do you view them? Do you view them like God does? Do you say things like this? They don't know what they're doing. That's God. He looks down on pitiful clay <clears throat> with moisture. <laughs> and He says, Father, there's a problem on earth. These people don't know what they're doing. Well, He said, yeah, without you. Without your spirit. So get to work, son. Work in them. Work through them, in, by, and through, so that they will do the will of the Father. You need the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Father because you don't know what it is. Amen. The Word of God is the will of the Father. How many of you have read the 66 books completely? See? And, you know, what, what I can say about that is the older I get, the real, realization of being a forgetful hearer. How many of you have had that problem? I'm talking about the, in this with God now, you know, that He will give me thoughts and help my speech, you know, with all the things I've been through. He raised me up to do it again. The Father hath provided again. So we, we know that everything that's going to happen here today is going to be, you know, Him in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. So our, uh, let me go back. Our concept. What is a concept? That's the thing that you do with what truth is. Everybody in this room says, hmm, what does that mean? And they get it in their head that you know, they've got the, the rote, the line, they can speak the line, but really, what does it mean? That's a bigger part than just saying, I know that. How many of you have been that know-it-all? You can't even talk to people anymore. I know that. I know that. Well, knowledge is increased. He said it would. But, you know, if you were working like the Holy Spirit, He's listening. He's listening to everything. How you think, what you speak, what in your heart you have devised, that concept that you say is God. Is God a God or is He a figment? of your imagination. But I want to ask you one question. When you've gone through difficulty in life, what was your first words? Father or God, help me. God, help me. Everything that we have, everything that we do everything belongs to Him. And He is our help. Isn't that what the Bible says? He's an ever-present help in times of need. By the way, He lives and abides in you so you don't have to scream. Actually, He's listening. He's a still, small voice. And you not, hey, you probably need to get that still, small voice when you've got a problem, you don't scream. The screaming is fear. It's fear. Like God has lost His ability to hear. No, He only listens <clears throat> to you when you have faith. What is faith? When you believe what He says. And if you don't believe what He says, 
then you can't have what he said you could have. And the world is sitting around saying, God, why didn't you do... Look, this is an accusation about, against the Most High God. And you understand when you scream, He's a still, small voice. He's listening for your whisper. A whisper in faith that says, I know the power of God is within me. The power of God and the authority of God is through me. When I speak to the mountain, it will surely move. Well, we're going to go into this a little deeper, so let me get there. I know y'all can't stand too much of this. A wrong concept of God shapes our expectations. If you've got a wrong concept, what's going to happen? If we believe He is weak, then we will not expect His power in our lives. Do you think God is weak? Uh, let's see. Did He create everything that is created? Is it still here? Mm hmm. So, if it's still here, and if God is still the same, and He's our Father because we've asked Him to come into our life, we go to the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace because you know how you are. And He does too. You took Him into everything you've ever done. He dwells in you, so every time you do something wrong, He's there. You're taking Him into your sins, and then you sit there like He doesn't know that you've sinned. And you, you confess your sin and with some... God... Oh, why do you get a crying voice when you do that? So God will think that you're sorry for your sin? Do you understand? He knows everything that you think. He knows what you're thinking when you don't say it. He knows the very things that are in your heart. Nothing can be concealed from Almighty God. So, I want you to be more careful when you think that you're going to do something without Him. Or you make your mind up to do it and didn't consort with Him. And because you didn't, then you're going on your own power, you're a, Lack of knowledge. I said that nicely, didn't I? All these teachers telling me, don't use the word ignorant. Okay. Well, how smart are we? You know, God knows, doesn't He? So, if we believe He's weak, then we will not expect His power in our life. I don't know if God will do this. Well, you, you need to go and see what He's done before and you'll know what He'll continue to do because God changes not. Amen? Amen. So, one more thing. If we believe He is distant and uncaring, then we will not expect His intervention in our times of need. Amen. Well, He won't do that. He won't do it for me. Uh, God is no respecter of persons. See, I, I know the Word of God. I put it in my heart. And I tell you that the thoughts that we have are a betrayal of what He is. Amen? Amen. Have you ever betrayed God? Yes. But He's merciful. Thank you, Jesus. And He's filled with grace. 
And He's waiting for us to turn to Him all the time. Well, we won't bother Him. He's busy with all these 8 billion people down here. You have a wrong thought about God. God is an infinite brain that knows everything. And you can't tell Him anything. You can just remind Him, Your Word says. And I believe Your Word. And He'll know to what degree you believe His Word. Amen? Amen. But He said, only when you come to Him with all of your heart. With all of your heart. That means your mind, your being, with all of your heart. Excuse me. Mm. Jen. No. <laughs> no. <coughs> what kind of wine is that you drinking? One that Jesus did. Okay. And that joke's getting old, isn't it? Well, anyway, let's go on. If we, <laughs> we believe that He's distant, uncaring, when we go to Him, we, we, won't, it, we won't think that He's going to do anything. You have to know what He's going to do. It's a knowledge of the truth that sets you free. That is what the Word of God teaches. And, well, we've got a few things we know. Uh, God wants to in, involve Himself in that library that you have and expand your knowledge beyond what you have. He wants you to know His Word so that when you have the adversary, selling you that you actually can come against him with authority. If you don't know his word, you have no authority. Amen. Amen. So let's go on. It's not fair. When you discover what he really is like, you become invincible. If you know that there's nothing that God can't do, He's the power above everything that lives and exists. He's the power that threw Satan out of heaven because of his pride. He's the power that's going to bind him again and throw him in a prison for a thousand years, bound. Then he's going to take him out of that, loose him for just a little while, it says, and then he's going to throw him in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. So, I don't think He lacks power. I think He's got more power than the ever-ready bunny. Amen. <laughs> a lot more power. And He's got a lot more knowledge than any man alive. Amen. His IQ is beyond counting. What He has, though, can be given to us through His Holy Spirit. Everything that He has comes to us through this Word. It is His great joy to give His children the kingdom. That means everything. That you don't have to be poor. You don't have to be dumb. <laughs> you... you <laughs> Let's do it the other way. You can be rich and you can be smart. <laughs> now, I want you to get it on one side or the other. Are y'all still listening? Okay. Do you know what invincible means? <laughs> yeah. There is nothing on the face of the earth that has more power than a person that believes. So, Daniel 11.32 says, Those who knew, know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Just knowing God gives me strength to know the will of God and to be strong. That means even at my advanced age, and Pop's advanced age, we can be strong and we can do exploits. Sometimes we fall off the steps, don't we? Amen. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> that wasn't God, by the way. <laughs> when you see Him for who He is, you realize there is nothing He wouldn't do for you. Say nothing He wouldn't do for you. Okay, you've got to understand that's the Word of God. Nothing that He would withhold from them that believe in Him. Nothing. So the adversary is with him. He's not going to do that for you. You know how sinful you are. You've been, you've been a bad boy or girl. He isn't going to do anything for you. Uh, he did something before we were bad boys and girls. He sent His Son into the world to save sinners. So because He sent His Son into the world to save sinners, I think everybody in this room qualifies. But he came, he came not to condemn. He had, a, he had difficulties with religious people because all they wanted to do was condemn each other. Uh, hypocrites, because they did the same things. They just didn't want anybody to know it. But God knows. Say that. But God knows. I want you to confess those things before God. That you know all about me, God. You know all my ways. You know all my thoughts. And you still love me. And you sent Jesus to save sinners such as I. Because of that, I believe your word that He saved sinners. And though I think of myself as the chiefest of those, He doesn't care. His blood is invincible. He gave it to us to conquer sin and to set us free. He wants all of us free. When you sin, you are in bondage. Amen? Say, uh, Satan will make a slave out of you. And you need to be delivered. But listen, there's some good news. He said, Jesus recognized that and said that deliverance is the children's bread. Come dine. <laughs> deliverance. That means set free from any bondage. You don't have to claw it and, and cry and all of that stuff. Don't, you don't have to even get emotional about it. You can just say, as a matter of fact, He sent His Son to save me, deliver me, set me free, and to meet all of my needs. Everyone. All your needs. So what has God left out? So your concept has to be wrapped around what the Word of God says or you don't have God in you. God is bigger than you, smarter than you. By the way, you cannot tell Him, I know that. <laughs> My generation. Okay. You can't do that. You realize that uh, when life, listen, when life isn't fair, God is still good. Amen. And He knows how to make up for what wrong has been done by you and against you. There's things you have to consider here. Let's continue, continue to obliterate <laughs> obliterate <laughs> I'm, oh it was just the Holy Spirit he was making me speak in tongues or something anyway <laughs> let's continue to obliter obliterate the thought that says <laughs> it's not fair uh, I'll never say anything about newscasters saying things wrongly again <laughs> see what you say comes back to you and let's believe in a God who knows how to right every wrong. 
that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does. When you know that you've done wrong, you look like that dog that gets in the corner that knows that he just did his business on the floor. <laughs> and he's wondering if you're going to kick him around or you're going to throw him out. What you going to do with him? If you want him to love you, you won't do any of those kind of things. You just say, don't do that again, baby. <laughs> Amen. First, believe in God, uh, uh, the God of restoration. What does restoration mean? Give back to you what was stolen from you. To restore health, wealth. Amen. God will restore all of that. Can you imagine that what the adversary took away from you when God shows up? He gives it up willingly. All of Egypt actually had to give up all the wealth that they had stolen from the Israelites that went into uh, Cana. Listen, our God delivered them in every way they could be delivered. And when they left, for heaven's sake, they were throwing gold on their satchels from the Egyptians. Everything that they had and more was given to them when they left that place. Thank you, Jesus, that you never change. You're the same today, yesterday, today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I just had to get it, get it in a row, you know. <laughs> Believe in the God of restoration. Joel 2, 23 through 25 says this, I will restore to you the years that have been eaten. The palmer worm, the canker worm, you know that, you've read it. But you, he said that he, this was God speaking, I will restore to you. Now God's no respecter of persons. What He did for them, He'll do for you if you have faith. And you got, you've got to wrap your head around what God will do for you in spite of you. If you're looking at Him from this position up, you're not looking at Him right. You have to look with Him down to see what men do. And then you realize that God does what He does irrespective of what you have done. All He's looking for is faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Amen? Amen? And that means faith in the Word like it's written. Some people out here that are looking at me, they change the Word into something for this day and age. You will pay for that. You cannot change the Word of God without God's wrath upon you. And I hate to say that, but God also can be a God of wrath. If you knowingly, willingly change His Word to fit you and give you permissions to do things when you're still not born again. You're just religious. And there's a lot of people like that that exist in the world today. They go to church and they think that they have done what is required of them. Let me say to you, you don't need to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. You don't. Because the Word of God is the only thing, Word of God spoken is the only thing that gives you faith. It's like the candle burning out slowly through the week. You need it. By the end of the week, you need it. Because that Word is the power of God 
unto salvation to them that believe. He wants salvation's a lot of things. He has to save you from yourself. Amen. Then he has to save you from enemies and what the enemies think about yourself. <laughs> he said, That doesn't matter to me. The only thing that matters to me is that you have faith in what I'm doing and in me, the God of the universe, and through that blood that was shed for you and in the name of Jesus that you can ask anything, anything. 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 If you go into the presence of the Lord, I'm a sad sack and, you know, I, I don't feel good and, and God, and, you know, you know, you know my ways of God. And look, that is not the way you get into His presence. Yes, Lord. You go into His presence with singing and thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thankful for the things He's done. Thank Him yes. in everything you do. Lesson, I want to say, everything. If you can't go to the potty and potty, when you can, thank Him. He said, in everything give thanks. I did that just to make a point. Everything is everything. So, I want you to, uh, to take a dose of the ghost now. Everything you do, you thank Him. All through my day, thank you, Lord. Everything I think about, thank you, Lord. I think about my wife, thank you, Lord. You know, I think about her cooking, mm-hmm, thank you, Lord. You know, I really give thanks to the Lord for everything. She brought in the groceries, I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and some painkillers, thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about the, the things in just a minute that we do. The things we do. Okay, no matter how uh, unfair life has been to you, God is in the restoration business. Well, Father, it hadn't been so good. Stop this. He said, give thanks to Him. You just... You're still looking at it from this vantage point and not from His. Thank you, Lord. Even when things hurt, thank you, Lord. Because my mind is set on restoration when I'm hurting. When they said I'd die, I said, I live. I choose life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me life. And even surprise the doctors. Thank you, Lord, that I can still surprise people. <laughs> he will make up for your lost time if you believe this promise. I will restore to you the, the years. Well, I'm this old. Stop talking about how old you are. When you talk about how old you are, you get older. How old am I? Old enough. <laughs> Don't ask me the question, how are you? <laughs> All is well. I'm going to give that to everybody. Please stop asking me how I'm doing. All is well. I wouldn't be standing here talking to you if... Y'all it wasn't well. Amen. Amen. So you gotta get this in your thinking that he will restore the years. How many of you want to be younger? More vital. He will restore the years. For heaven's sake. If he keeps restoring me, I'll be a baby. <laughs> Amen. I don't want, I don't want to 
have to be diapered again. <laughs> Number two, meditate on Psalms 23 and 6. Psalm 23 and 6 says, Surely. That's a word that nobody uses these days. But surely means with assurance, without a doubt. Surely. Goodness. Goodness. God is good. None are good except God. Jesus' own words about it. How many of you are good? Without Jesus, you are not good. No good in you. But, you know, you're, you're that person. You know good. You know good. You know that song. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it to you today anyway. <laughs> Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Thank you, Lord. Think on surely. surely. It leaves no doubt, no question. It will happen if you understand that surely was put there and it's not a girl's name. Surely. Let me enunciate. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Who's following me? God. <laughs> All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That's a good place to dwell. So, it's going to happen. Number three, see things through the eyes of eternity. How does God see it? That's the way you need to see it and that's the way your mouth needs to see it. Change your words when you see it like God sees it. Don't be quick to speak after you've heard something. And until you've talked to God about it, you don't know what He wants, to, wants you to say. But I promise you, what you hear from Him will be Words of faith, strength, hope, greatness, goodness, mercy. It won't be, you son of a gun, I'm going to... Okay. He'll change your life, right? So Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If you then uh, be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth, Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Are you seeking things from His vantage? From where He comes, comes from as He looks upon it? He is love. He is mercy. He is the all in all through all, by all, in you all. you got to see it from His vantage. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections. That means love what He loves. Hate what He hates. Set your affections on things above. No bad thing gets into the kingdom. No flesh and blood will inherit the kingdom. Only the spirit that is within you can be renewed, made whole, made like God. So there's a small part of you that want, God wants to redeem. And it's not that clay lump in the seat that you're sitting in. Only God Amen. is looking at you from the inside out. Set your affections on the things above, not on the things of earth. Okay, all you Adidaphobes. Let's, who's an Adidaphobe? Oh, one. We've got one in here. That's a thing of earth. Uh, and they'll wear out. <laughs> 
for ye are dead. How many things can a dead man do? Okay, so that means he has to be our life. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ who is our life appears, we will be not just like Him, but with Him. Amen. Amen. Thankful I know that verse because I don't type well. <laughs> and sometimes all the words don't come together like they should be. Anyway, <clears throat> see things through the, light, uh, the eyes of eternity. Luke 21, 1 through 4 says this, And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. Where was he looking from? He was kneeling in the house of God. And he looked up at these people walking around and throwing their, their offerings into the plate. Now you want to see like God? Now this is the truth. Say that. The Word of God is true. The Word of God is true. So, and he looked up and he saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a certain poor woman casting in thither two mites. I don't know what a mite is. Well, they're a bug, aren't they? I don't know. Two, two mites. I guess it means that they were a small thing in, uh, in regard to living. So, and he said... Of a truth I say unto you, this poor woman, this widow, hath cast in more than they all. Two mites. How can that be more than they all? Well, Jesus is about to tell you. For all these things that they have out of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury... Now that's a word that we don't use a lot in the English language, but you're trying to make it up in your mind. Well, let me, without a doubt, give you the definition of penury. It's extreme poverty. And she gave not a little. She gave all that she had to live on. Now, that in the eyes of God was more than all of the other offerings because they gave out of what they had in stores, storehouses. You know, they had plenty. And they gave little to the house of God. But she gave everything, gave all when she came to the house of God. Now, Brother Ron, you don't think that he, he meant we should give all, right? Uh, all you have, you got from him. You know what he requires. You know, if you know him, you're going to do his will. You, you give as he said to give. Now, I can't change the word for you. But this is a big issue because you show him if he's first and the only thing that he asks you to do is take out of your what you make, your increase, and give 10% of your increase. What does that mean? All that you have. But that first tenth is all he required but he's looking at the heart that gives it. Do you say, when you look at the money you got, I could do other things with this? Now, you know, box your own jaw. <clears throat> because you know that if God required it, He will give it back to you. He's a God of restoring. And he gives it back with interest. 
I've never seen him do less. We've been blessed, haven't we, Sheila? Every time I think I'm going to outgive him, he sends people into the church. He sends people into the counseling center. And he gives my wife exorbitant raises. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. That ain't bad for somebody that was thrown away. But God sees everything. And He'll be a God to the fatherless, and He is. And I can tell you, knowing Him is the greatest thing I've had in my life. Knowing Him. I know Him personally. He speaks to me. For heaven's sake, He sent angels, and I've got pictures of them, to, to watch over me. He knows what's coming. He's dispatched angels and He's shown me that. And the reason He does that, He will do that for you. He will do that for you. He's not a respecter person. He will do it for you. If you believe. If you have a relationship with Him. He is above every relationship. And you need to be thankful. Because I was a Powell, <laughs> and I had the power to fuss and cuss and all of that until I bumped into the Lord and then He changed my words, my thoughts, my beliefs, and He made me His Son. And He calls me Beloved when I talk to Him. That means Beloved, you know, He's not King James. Beloved goes back to the beginning of where He made sons. <clears throat> Amen? Amen? Now I'm trying to get you to think like He thinks. I don't want your religion. If you're saying something you're not sure of, go back and say, you're the surety for me. Make me sure. Surely His presence. Surely God. Surely Okay? Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> the rich Pharisees seemingly gave more money, but from God's point of view, the widow gave more than all of them because she gave all she had to live on. That's what that means. She gave it all. She saw eternity. She is being rewarded from heaven. You know, if you say, well, I've got to sacrifice this. But listen, everything you sacrifice, God looks at like His Son who sacrificed everything. And He's looking for you to be sons and daughters like Christ. And like Christ means you sacrifice everything everything for the will of God. Everything. Is that getting to you yet? <laughs> the poem goes, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Live in eternal purpose. Measure your choice by how they will affect your eternity and how important they are to heaven. And the rest of the poem goes like this. And when I'm dying, how happy I'll be if the lamp of my life has burned out for thee. In Him we live and move and have our being. You kind of wrap your mind around that. He called you to be sons and daughters like He called Jesus to do His will. He said, be perfect even as I'm perfect. He said, be holy even as I'm holy. How can you do those things? You're a human being, right? I'm trying to change your mind about that. 
he actually says that you're aliens in this world. He calls you peculiar people. I can agree with that anyway. And so, <laughs> and, and He has empowered you. He put His Spirit inside of you, which is an eternal spirit. That means that the only thing you lay down when you have lived your life is this flesh and blood because it can't inherit eternal life. So you lay it down and you give in to what we call death down here. But there is no death to us. We, like Him, live forever because His Spirit is in us. And that Spirit is what He redeemed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me get you on down the road. Realize misfortune and disappointment don't have control over you. But you, you know, I'm having such a bad time. I, listen, it's your speech that is giving you a bad time. You change your mind, you change your concept of God, and you change your speech, and you will have what you say. Amen. He told us that. You will have what you say. If you believe and not doubting in your heart, you can cast mountains into the sea. Have you ever count, cast one? Every day. Every day. All those problems every day. All the things we, we have been beat down with, cast them every day. Cast them away. When you get sick, listen to me. He said, we have been given authority to bind on earth and bind in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so when we bind on earth, it is bound in heaven. And what am I, I mean by that? The devil that's bothering you, you can do this to him. I bind you. Now, he's the only one we shout out at. I bind you in Jesus' name. What is... God say about that? He's bound. What can he do when he's bound? No, he said when a strong man comes in the house, you know, he can bind everything and take the goods. Now, when the adversary is trying to steal from you help, you bind that spirit of infirmity. You're bound. You can do no more to me. And God will bind him in the heavens. Now that's bigger than your theology. Amen. But it's the Word of God. Amen. And He has given us that power to bind. He says that we've been given power over all, all things. We step on. Now, there was a place in the Old Testament He said to a prophet, you sit on Scorpions and serpents. Well, they're not going to move. I don't want them that close, so I'm going to just step on them. <laughs> yeah, any, I put them under my feet. That is another scripture. You put Satan under your feet. He has no power except the power of a lie. The power to mess with your concept of God. to change how you think about the Almighty. By the way, think about Almighty. No left out might. So, it's how you respond to these things that determine the outcome of your life, both here in, on earth and in eternity. How do you respond when something happens you don't like? You start spitting out what you don't like to a human now, don't get in agreement with something that you don't like. What's supposed to come out of your mouth is the Word of God. He said, bind demons. He said, step on serpents and scorpions. He said, they will not harm you. No... Harm 
can come to you when you do what He says. Harm comes because it's sin, what you are doing. Harmasha. That's the word in, in the original. Harmasha. It means sin. So nothing shall make you sin. No harm can come to you when you're speaking to the devils in His name. And you're binding them in His name. You can raise up people from sick beds. You can do what He did. Luke 14. The works that I do shall ye do and greater works than these because I go to my Father which is in heaven. If you haven't seen that happen, you're just not doing what He said. Right. When you're sick, He says, when you're sick, call for the elders of the church and they'll pray for you. You have to confess your sin. Mm -hmm. And then He will give you healing. Sin's a sneaky thing because it came from a sneaky thing creature and he tries to get into your mind it's so subtle so subtle so it's how you respond to these things and determine the out that will determine the outcome of your life both here on earth and in eternity five focus on the, uh, the good God has done in your life focus on the good God has done in your life Psalm 103, 1 through 5 says this, Bless the Lord. Can you bless the Lord? O oh, my soul, where you're thinking about it, and all that is within me, bless His holy name, given to the Spirit that's inside of you. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and forget not all His benefits. You need to rehearse those. So I'm going to give them to, to you right here. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities. How many? All. Okay. Father, forgive me. It's done. It's done. I'm a bad boy. Shut up. You were a bad boy till you confessed and he took away that sin. Okay. Who healeth all of thy diseases. How many? Oh. I want you to remember this because you don't believe it sometimes. <clears throat> you think I got to get a man to do this? All men have done to me. I, I'm, I'm not trying to diss doctors, but I want to tell you they did not heal me. God used them, but He was the healing power. And He's the one that will raise you up. So He will, He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all of our diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. That means the blood was poured on you. So He's redeemed you by His blood. And that redemption keeps you from going to Hades or hell or whatever you call it. It keeps you from going there. Thank you, Jesus. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's the way that you should respond. That crown is on you. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That should be you. That should be your character. Because God is in you. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hey, he's going to give me feathers. <laughs> Means I'll be able to fly again. <laughs> and I'll eat creatures that are not dead. <laughs> they were at my hand. You know, that's what the, that's what the eagle does, doesn't he? Okay. 
recognize what's you know, been given to you as a gift to serve others. He didn't give you a gift to take it upon you and pride gets into you when that happens. Isn't that true? Okay, every man hath received the gift, so even so minister the same one to another as good stewards and of the manifold grace of God. Use what God has done in your life to bring others to a higher place in God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Six, promotion comes from above. Okay, if you haven't been promoted yet, you're looking too low. Only God gives promotion. Psalm 75, 7 says, But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth an, up another. He's the one that gives you your pay raise and your position. If you don't get it, you're not looking to Him for it. Amen? Amen. It's your mind that keeps you from the good things of God. Promotion comes from above. No matter how far down life has tried to put you, no matter how far down the devil has tried to push you, God is the God of promotion. Listen to me. If you're trying to get promoted, talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. He's, all, he's the one that will change the devil's heart to give you the job. He'll call you out of the darkness into the marvelous, marvelous light. He'll, that means He's going to show people the things that need to be rewarded. God's going to do that. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is believe that He's going to do that for you. No matter what has been said, no matter what they called you, no, God will go around them to give you promotion. Amen. Amen. He will raise you up if you trust Him. God's going to raise you up. Okay. <laughs> if you trust Him, He will exalt you as you humble yourself. Listen. He will raise you up if you trust Him. And He, not you, He will exalt you as you humble yourself. God gives to those that are humble. It's humility that wins the jackpot with God. You want to be the lottery winner? <laughs> He said, remember, think on things above. Okay. It's pride to accept defeat. Did you know that? It's pride that'll do that. It puts you in some place that thinks that you can do it without God. And then when you try, He allows you to be defeated. Because you did it without Him. Amen. you got to wrap your mind around that. Humility accepts what God says. It's not trying to make up a new King James Version for everybody <clears throat> with improper pronouns. Anyway, James 1.21 says this, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity. That means the way you think about everything. Superfluity of naughtiness. How many of you are naughty? How many have ever been told you were naughty? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and receive with meekness, that's humility of, uh, of mind, with meekness an engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The meek will inherit the earth. Expect to be raised up above the unfair treatment of this life and what it brings. Amen? Amen. It's your time. You said, 
glad we got there. I believe in the God of restoration. He will restore me all the years that have been destroyed in my life by the devil, by how I've been treated, by my bad decisions. Nobody here ever makes bad decisions, right? I expect goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. And it surely will surely happen. Get it's all in caps, so don't forget it. I choose to live with eternal purpose. What I do for Jesus is what I, I what will echo in eternity. That's how I choose to live. Whatever happened to me will not control my life. The outcome of my life is determined by the choices I make. And my choices will line up with God's Word. This is sort of like a wedding, you know. You say repeat and they get this kind of glazed over look. Anyway, <laughs> they forget there's a promise being made to God. This is the same thing. I expect promotion to come into my life. Because I humble myself and I receive what God says about me. No matter what this life tries to bring me, God will raise me up above it. He is more than fair. He is more than enough. And when His life is not fair, <laughs> thank you for correcting me, God more than makes up for it in my life. In Jesus' name. So you just you just profess things and God just listen. If you believe that the Word of God was preached to you today, give thanks. Amen. Give thanks. Not to me, but to God. He receives all the praise. Amen. Amen. If you didn't like it, praise God anyway. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. Thank you today that you're here, that you're in all of us. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that your word never changes. Thank you, Lord, that we receive your word with meekness. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you do the works through us. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you.